My brothers and sisters, the story of the creation of human beings is repeated in the Quran several times. In this revelation, Allah wants us to understand where we came from and to understand why we are here. So he mentions Adam alayhi salam, the prophet Adam, and he mentions Eve or Hawa, may peace be upon them. And Allah Almighty tells us in many places in the Quran about various aspects of creation. So at times he says they were created from dust, then he says soil, then he says clay and so on. People say, why is there a contradiction? There is no contradiction. These are the various stages of creation. That's all it is. So when he says a droplet of semen, he's talking about what happened later. When he talks about the dust that was initial, when he talks about the clay that is mixture of that dust and earth with water, when he talks about mud that is also one of the levels. So there is no contradiction. But what's of interest is, when Allah Almighty mentions the story of Adam, he clearly says to Adam, listen, you have an enemy. Subhanallah. That was a distinct statement made by Allah to Adam. Allah says, oh Adam, you have an enemy. He doesn't like you. He's going to plot your downfall. Be careful. So what should I do? If I don't want to someone to succeed in their plot of my downfall, what should I do? Well, take heed, be watchful, follow the rules, make sure that you don't falter. So Allah Almighty says to him, well, there's only one rule basically here. What was the rule? Allah says, لا تقرب هذه الشجرة Don't eat, don't even come close to this tree. Don't eat from this particular fruit. Now, one might ask, why did Allah decide that he doesn't want Adam to eat from this particular tree? When you've connected to Allah and connected to revelation, the true answer is, it's the decision of the Almighty. He decides what he wants to do. But, if you would like a deeper explanation, you see, Allah tests you by telling you to do things, and then he tests you by telling you to abstain from things. When you have a mathematics exam, your examiner will not only test you with addition. They'll say, how do you add these things? So you add them all up. Then he says, well, how do you subtract these things? So you are tested with subtraction and division, not just multiplication and addition. So in a similar way, Allah tests you holistically. He's going to test you by telling you, do this, let's see if you do it. Okay, and don't do this, let's see if you're not going to do it. Subhanallah. So that's Allah. He wants to give you the greater qualification. So he tests you with do's and don'ts. And then he tests you with things to say, well, these are things it's better for you to do. Then he tests you with other things. These are things it's better for you not to do. So that's where the voluntary deeds come in and so on. But here Allah decided, you know what? I don't want you to do one thing. And part of the plan of Allah was he wanted to create a creature who would repent to him. It's the issue of repentance. It is the issue of turning back to Allah. That is what Allah wanted and that is what Allah loves. <speaking in Hebrew> Indeed, whoever comes to his Lord, whoever comes on that day to his Lord as a criminal, will be cast into hellfire. So in the same way a criminal on earth is cast into prison, that's a different type of prison. It's called hellfire. It's where they will be punished. So Allah Almighty speaks about it. And he warns us the whole idea of mentioning hellfire and telling us how it is tormentful and how painful it is and how uh, the flames will burn the flesh and so on. The idea of that is not in order to turn us away from faith, but rather the exact opposite, in order to keep us in check that there is a punishment that awaits those who are criminals. Just like on earth, you have the law of the land, for example, where they warn you even about driving, something as simple as driving. You're above the limit by a few kilometers and here they are punishing you. And then we say, wow, this country is beautiful. You know, they have strict laws governing this and that. 
But when it comes to Allah, we get upset. It's like we are saying that Allah doesn't have the right to exercise, you know, the punishment or to enforce the law. But we all do have the right to enforce a man-made law. Subhanallah. I promise you Allah is in charge and he is in control. When we die, none will be able to even speak except by the permission of Allah Almighty. And that's why Allah Almighty says that in the Quran, that you won't be able to speak or say a word except by the permission of Allah. So we ask Allah Almighty to grant us an understanding. The reason I make mention of this, people disconnect from revelation when they hear about punishment. They disconnect. They don't want to hear about it. No, it's very important to go through the verses and to learn about the punishment like this where Allah says, Indeed, whoever comes on the day of judgment as a criminal will be from among those who are cast into hellfire, which means they will serve their sentence. Some may serve a life sentence, some may serve, well, when we say life sentence, they will be in there for a prolonged time. Some may serve shorter sentences. Some, Allah Almighty says, we may just forgive them. On earth, when there is a criminal, someone who's committed murder or a robber who has robbed a bank or robbed houses, someone who's robbed from you, a burglar, any criminal, wouldn't you like to see the criminal taken to task, punished, either through a prison sentence or a punishment that is valid for this particular crime? Well, on earth, we're happy when a criminal is punished and corrected sometimes. Yes, after they are punished, they are reintroduced into society and watched because they're given another chance, especially if it's a petty crime or it's something that's not major. However, at times there are major crimes where a life sentence perhaps is being served because of the type of crime that was committed. Now you and I understand this, the whole world understands it, that you need to pay for your crimes, you need to pay for your actions. Why is it that we get upset or some people get upset when they are told that there is a punishment that awaits the criminals on the day of judgment and in the hereafter. Some are punished in a smaller way, some are punished in a bigger way, and some might have what we would term here a life sentence. So it is really part of the justice system of Allah Almighty that when a person does wrong, they would be paying the price of the wrong they did in this world as well as the next. And if a person does right, then they would be rewarded for the, what they did that was right. When a person has outstanding bravery, assisted and helped the country or the nation or the people or humanity in a huge way, they get a prize. They are rewarded either by their governments or by someone, an organization or people in authority. They are rewarded. Minimum is they are thanked by those who have benefited. So don't become upset when you hear that on the day of judgment there will be some people who will be cast into hellfire. Allah Almighty tells that to us. Instead, He tells it to us in order for us to take heed so that we are not criminals, so that we don't engage in what would be termed as criminal behavior. May Allah Almighty protect us all. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.